What's up, guys? This is Nate from Allborn. You're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. And this is Rina from Silentium. And today we will be talking to Nate from Allborn. My name's Chris, and I'm the third wheel. <laughs> You're also numb nuts. <laughs> Damn. Um, I'm actually in Rockford right now. Prophetstown is, um, it's right next to Sterling. You know where Sterling is? What state are we in? Are we in Maryland? Illinois. Oh, okay. Illinois. Uh, Illinois. Yeah. Illinois. Look at Chris nodding like he knew what the hell that was. He I no really idea. didn't know. <laughs> I've, I've lived in the U.S. for like two and a half years. I don't even know the towns around where I live. <laughs> Where are you guys at? I'm in Virginia, Richmond. I'm okay. in D.C. I am in Helsinki, Finland. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like these guys did an interview with me for my my band's um um album release, and then I did a guest hosting session, and now I'm growing on this fucking podcast like moss, and they can't get rid of me. <laughs> we, we try and block her, but she keeps popping in. <laughs> the truth yeah. be told is, we did this interview with her, and it went off the chains. And then Bruce is like, we should ask her to guest host. <laughs> it's the only reason people listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> anyway. Quote a woman. But hey, back to uh, or back to your band. We haven't even gone to your band yet. But it, it was it was good stuff. That was like one of my like one of the best things about doing this podcast is is discovering new bands. And yours totally like did it for me. So so tell us a little bit about Allborn and where you guys are at at the moment. Um, well, Allborn, they uh, I'm the most recent member. I joined like a year ago, but they started in 2015. Um, and then they're all out of you know Prophetstown, Sterling area, and whatnot. But yeah, they've been growing ever since then. Um, and then right now we're. Uh, we just had our EP release, Imperative, on uh, uh, August 28th, so we've been promoting that and whatnot, and then um, we also just signed a deal with Imagine Records. Oh, nice. So, so, yeah, also promoting that, but yeah, good things in the works, you know, we're a little held back right now because of the whole COVID situation with playing live, but what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, but does it then give you more time to like work on the album if you got signed now as well? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we uh, every weekend pretty much. We um, Friday and Saturday nights, uh, actually Saturday all day. Recently, we we've, we've been writing new stuff and whatnot, so it's been a lot of fun. But cool. And have, then all, all week long, you just jones for it, right? You're like, oh right. God, oh, I should have oh, yeah. done this or I should have done that. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I sometimes think when you're writing, the most creative time is when you're not actually with your instrument, but you're with yourself. If that makes oh, any for sense. Sure. So, like, you write your parts, and then you walk away, and you start thinking, and you're like, oh, ah, I should have do this, or I should do that, or whatever. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny, too. I know, like, uh, and I know my lead singer has a bunch of ideas, like, when you're trying to sleep, you know, just yeah. weird times for the night, stuff like that. When you can't oh, yeah. to get to a guitar, so then, you know, you might lose it by the morning time. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it works. Like that is the most creative time is when, like, when you're just about to fall asleep because that's when your brain is like, all right. the white noise of, of just being alive, you know. And you get to go into that twilight zone of of humanity, and that's <laughs> where all the good stuff comes from. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Do you find it difficult promoting and getting the word out about a record or an EP in this uh, climate we're in? Um. It, I guess it depends. I don't know, because, you know, the advertising on your social media and, um, you know, like doing this right here, that type of stuff, you can still do. But, you know, as far as playing live shows is where you, really where you can convince people, you know, to follow your band and check you out and whatnot and where you can really connect with the audience. So I think, you know, once that starts happening again, we'll be able to promote it a lot better, too. Because okay. they're actually promoting for you as well, you know, when they buy the CD. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But Do people when still guys... buy CDs? Say, it, say that again? Do people still buy CDs? Oh, um, 
Yeah, I think I noticed they do. Uh, myself, I like collecting CDs, you know, and really any time I'm at a show or whatnot, I try to buy buy a CD at least from one of the bands. Cool, cool. So, yeah, I'm a, we, I'm a fan of physical media as well, you know, whether it be vinyl or or CDs, even cassettes. Yeah. I've had in the past. I like to sit down and read the liner notes and do all the you know the bullshit that a lot of the uh, kids these days don't have time for. They do the ninety second. Let me listen to one song, buy one song, and then they're done. Right. Yeah. Rena, what about you? You buy physical media? I completely do. I still have a collection of around, like, I'd say seven to 800 DVDs of horror movies, for instance, that I get for regularly. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Can you <laughs> I don't even actually have a functioning DVD player at the moment, but it's not like those gems of things are ever going to disappear from my cabinets. But I do. I think uh, I think it's like our generation still understands the importance of actually supporting bands with real money, like whether it be buying the CD or buying merch. What you, you mean? Point zero zero seven cents a stream doesn't really bring in the bacon, or what? Not really, though. <laughs> really, does it? Like, I think there has a much better deal or something. I can't remember. I haven't really looked into that because it's blah. But you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if you never listened to this podcast before. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we uh, it's, or it might be better we don't off. go down the regular stuff. How many interviews have you done for the band so far? Uh, it's my first. <laughs> this is your first. Yeah, I had a totally feeling. Everybody. I had That's a feeling. Totally. So welcome. Now, do you want to be broken in the easy way or the hard way? Uh, anyway. <laughs> hard way. Sure. <laughs> All it. right. <laughs> is, does that open the door, Chris? It opens the door. So... Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. It goes between two buns. You know, that's what, that's I'm, what I'm saying. Most people say no, but I 100% agree with you. All right. I guess it is, you know, it isn't vertical. It's horizontal, but... But I don't think that makes a difference, right? It doesn't yeah, have need to get the details. <laughs> no, a sandwich is a sandwich. It's two. It's something stuffed between two pieces of bread. Right. Okay, so Which then... What okay, do you call that little it. piece of bread that ties oh, the no. hot dog bun together? Oh, that, like, oh, good question. But which yeah. one would you say is more of a sandwich, a burger or a hot dog? Well, they're both sandwiches. Yeah, but which one is more of a sandwich? Is there a- have more of a sandwich? Well, no, <laughs> it is, because I think, the, I think the hamburger is more of a sandwich. I think so, too, because it's clearly two separate pieces of bread with stuff between them. Because you did bring up a very good point about the hot dog bun being actually one piece of bread, if, if we're being... But, so, what you're, so what you're saying is if I slice that little piece of... Well, we call it the hot dog hymen. Somebody told us that. But anyway. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> sorry, Rita. <laughs> How are Somebody you doing over that. there? <laughs> no. Rena just choked on her uh, healthy bread or whatever she's eating. You okay? <laughs> I can actually weigh in on this. I work at a Jimmy John's, which is a sandwich place. Yep. Oh, look at me. An <laughs> and uh, when we cut our sandwiches, we don't cut them all the way through. There is a piece of the, they're both connected. Oh. So like for so. your sandwiches as well. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say the hamburger because it has lettuce on it. Like, when was the last time you had a fucking hot dog with lettuce? Or tomato. True. Never. Exactly. Uh, I've had one with Pico de Gallo. Does that count? Yeah, yeah I think so. Okay. Yeah. Let, we should get back to music, though, because, like, you know, it's his first interview. We already brought out the hot dog hymen with the guy. It's yeah, his first got interview. We got, a, we got, <laughs> I got one more that's just itching. This is the one that all fans want to know about. Right. What three things could you buy at the grocery store that would make the cashier the most uncomfortable? Ooh. <laughs> let me think on that one i'll I'll come back to it all right let's get back to uh let's get back to (laughs) alborn yeah (laughs) okay so why did you guys cover alice in chains just out of curiosity i was just listening to it it sounds fucking killer and it's like super drop tune what what brought you guys to cover that track um, well, it's, you know, it's one of Justin, our lead singer's favorite bands. It's one of my favorite bands. Uh, honestly, I'd say the whole band, you know, enjoys them. And I think Justin was just listening through, 
um, a CD or something like that. And I think he found the song and he just heard, you know, the potential for it as far as our band goes. So he, uh, he did a little mock-up of it and sent it to us and, and we all agreed that we could do it. So, I mean, you know, there's some singers that people try not to cover very much because they're so unique. Like, you know, like whenever you hear someone do a Zeppelin cover, you're always kind of like, meh or, (laughs) you know what I mean? But he actually pulled it off. And and Lane Staley is one of those singers that, like, if you're going to cover it, you better bring it, you know? Right. <laughs> and he did. So I just oh, wanted yeah. to say that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So so quickly, um, is there a message or something you want your fans to take away from after listening to an Auburn, Auburn record? Yeah, I think uh, each song, you know, the lyrics are, are deep. Uh, Justin's a very good lyricist. And... Um, Every song, like, uh, let me think, like Waves, he, uh, he put a whole big message out about it. You know, it's about time in his life when he was confused, you know, didn't know where he was going. Um, he just wanted, you know, music to be his main thing, but he was stuck at a job where he was working, you know, 70 hours a week or something like that craziness. Um, and the lyrics reflect that, you know, and so I think, you know, after every song, when I just want to, I want to have like everybody feel relieved. I guess almost like they connected with the song that much that it, you know, puts them in a place where they feel relieved. Okay. I understand. I understand. How about you personally? What's your relationship with lyrics? Because I know like it's basically like a split in two. either lyrics are a really important part of a song for you or you don't give a shit. And I know. <laughs> both people, you know? So which one are you? Oh, I definitely, I, I like lyrics a lot. You know, I, I pay attention to those. Uh, I love when the lyrics, go with the like when the instrumentals can kind of tell the story on their own and then the lyrics thrown on top just totally complements it yeah yeah absolutely yeah i'm I'm a firm believer and like a good song can be ruined by ridiculous crappy lyrics <laughs> maybe not a bad song can be saved but a mediocre song can be like elevated to another level by really right. good lyrics yeah i agree Wop. <laughs> you know that Ooh. song, Wet Ass Pussy? Oh, that's that stupid shit that's all over the radio now, Art. <laughs> Smith- I don't think I've ever heard it, but I hear about it. <laughs> I said that in a previous podcast, but I am all for the message of that song. I am all for the fucking sexual liberation of women. I Me thought we too. did it, but apparently fucking not. You know, I'm for it too, man. I'm saying, hey, yeah. it's a good I thing. I haven't heard it, so I don't know anything about it. And- is there a straight sexual man out there that's like, oh man, I don't want to meet a sexual woman? Like, no, it doesn't happen. Right. <laughs> as far as I know. I mean, maybe it maybe it does. I don't know, but you know. <laughs> they want to meet a sexual woman that is then like sexual on their terms and like within their sexual parameter, if that makes sense. You oh, know, like this is getting very are, this is getting you know, very psychological. There. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm I'm very, well, you know that from our first interview, that I'm a pretty frank person who has no problem talking about dicks and vaginas, or, or whatever <laughs> related to sex. <laughs> and I want to demystify the subject, because it, it, like, you know, makes everybody's life horrible when it becomes this mystical thing that can't be discussed. So, what's your view on the matter? <laughs> like, how, do you like women talking raunchy, or does it does it like make you uncomfortable? Because it's allowed for men, but for women, it's somehow cheap and you know has negative connotations. What's your view? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to your first interview. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> you know, I think it depends. You know, everybody has to make a speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess there's some, you know, I don't know if every song is acceptable either way, you know, like there are some songs I can think of, you know, but even guys or whatnot, you know, both sexes that are super raunchy that I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, so I don't know, I guess there's extremes and then there's, you know, if you want to do it, you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good view. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what are you guys doing? What's, what's your next step? What's the next step for your band? Um, got some stuff happening pretty soon here. Um, can't talk about it much, but, (laughs) (laughs) and then, uh, yeah, I guess we're just writing like 
like I said, every weekend trying to build up a you know, good amount of songs and whatnot. Um, just keep practicing and promoting online and whatnot. The uh, um, EP imperative, and then yeah, once COVID gets done, we'll be hitting the road again. Right on. Hopefully, it gets done soon. Oh my goodness! Yeah, hopefully, get to right. see you guys out on the road somewhere. Chris is done with COVID. Um, <laughs> Here we all are. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you guys record yourselves, or do you work with engineers, producers? How does that work for you? Oh, uh, so we do like we, every weekend. We do. We have like a little home studio. And we uh, record on there and go through the parts and whatnot, get a general idea. And then um, in the past, they've gone, before I was in the band, they've gone to uh, Jose Curz, or, or Quiza <laughs> out of uh, Three Years Hollow. Yeah. If you know that band. Um, so he was the production engineer. And then I'm, I know on like that EP, they had Morgan Rose from Seven Dust came and um, helped produce for that. Um and then, yeah, coming up, I'm not sure, you know, who will have a part of it, but we'll see. Cool. Awesome. So where can, people, where can people go to find out more about your band? Um, we have a website, www.allbornband.com. And that's A-L-B-O-R-N-E? Yeah, A-L-B-O-R-N. N. Sorry. Okay. Without the E. Yep. I'm fucking Canadian. I have an E on the end of everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay. And then uh, we we also got a Facebook, and then uh, Instagram, Twitter. Cool, and it's all A L B O R N. Yep, Alborn. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome, and that's all I've got, Rena. Anything? Yeah, yeah. I have one one question. Uh-oh. Would you be willing <laughs> to be one of the first people who took a COVID vaccination, Ooh. or like out there? Would you be in the front row of like, yeah, let's, uh-huh. let's get that shot? I don't think so. I'm not a, I don't know. I've, I've never really been a huge guy in vaccinations. Right. Yeah. Um, there, there's zero fucking chance. I will be <laughs> in like taking that vaccination like within the first year. I, I want right. to say- no, no, I You know what? I told my wife, I'll, I have no problem. I'm actually a pro vaxxer. I think it's great. I just said, I'm going to wait until Europe and Canada approve it. Because I'm not going to let the U.S. approve it because I don't really trust it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Apparently, the question, the already had one, and I don't know whether it was a joke, but if they actually did name it Sputnik, there's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> there's so, have you seen the Russian memes going around where it's like the COVID vaccine from Russia, and then they have like a little bottle of Smirnoff and a needle in it and stuff like that? <laughs> Well, you know, if, if fucking what what was it that Trump wanted us to like detergent or what was oh, it? Oh, bleach! Right? Yeah, you got to inject yeah. bleach. Oh, yeah. Throw so bleach throw UV light dead. down your throat. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll kill something off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, with this, I'm good. And thank you for having your camera on. This is also eye candy for me. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Oh hey hey, she's a good looking woman. You gotta oh, yeah. better watch yourself. <laughs> awesome, thank you, man. Awesome. Green, I think you made him blush a bit. Really? <laughs> and by the way, good first interview. This is not the easiest podcast to come on and do an interview. No, we're a bunch of assholes. And you did good you for, for your first time. time. You did good for your first time. <laughs> no, I thought, hey, this wasn't that bad. This is a uh, no. You guys are cool. So <laughs> trust me, all the other interviews you're going to do, you're going to get asked none of those questions that we asked you. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Thank you for taking the time. Good. good luck with the EP, and I hope you uh, stay safe, my friend. Thanks, guys. You guys too. Okay. Rita, I think you made him blush. I think I did. He was so. <laughs> I don't cool. think so. <laughs> he was so cute. Oh my god. He was yeah. very shy. Oh yeah, and Arena oh, starts talking about sex, and he didn't know what to do. <laughs> I know. What do you think about the sexual liberation of women? <laughs> uh, he had to talk about his record. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect. That was great. I, was, I, I knew right away it was his first time. I was like, oh, he's. Ne- <laughs> I was like, they threw him in under the bus. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, his bandmates just like 
right under the bus. <laughs> it was a great sport. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.